All right, here's our problem for tonight. So what we got here is we have a realistic uh, DX302 digital receiver. Um, this is from a friend of mine at work, and he asked if I could help out. Um, it's got a mechanical problem. That's why I'm involved. <laughs> he does uh, electronic stuff uh, at work, so uh, he can handle all the electronics in here, but uh, he asked for a little bit of mechanical help. Um, and I'll show you what's the matter with it in a second. It has to do with the kind of the main frequency tuner here. But he claims this is some kind of interesting, you know, ham radio piece. And um, and what it is is it's, it was marketed by Tandy, uh, which is Radio Shack for all you folks. Uh, that's when Radio Shack really, you know, sold some cool stuff instead of just batteries and cell phones, right? Um, and this is a... It has a wide range, is what he was telling me, uh, is interesting about this one. And it goes from um, 10 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. So that's its kind of its range that it can operate in. Um, and it's pretty cool, actually. It's kind of a mechanical marvel inside. We're going to pop the cover off and get a look at it. And uh, I'll show you what the problem is with the main tuner that we're going to fix. So, uh, so we're actually going to make, some, uh, make a gear for him is what we're going to do. So uh, let's check it out. All right, here's our sick gear right here. Um, so this is a, there's a speed reduction through this knob uh, and this outer knob through to a potentiometer that's behind here. And it's actually kind of cool. I was, uh, um, you know, I took the gear off and this gear was originally molded to this shaft and we're not going to be able to do that again. So we're going to make a metal gear to replace this one, and uh, then we have to come up with a way to attach it to the shaft securely. Um, but what's interesting is they have these, uh, their ball bearing, um, what I would call coaxial gear uh, speed reducers. So when I turn this knob, it has a, uh, um, a gear reduction to the potentiometer, which is kind of neat. And there's several examples on it. There's one over here, there's one here, and there's one on the back side of this. And uh, I, did, I was trying to get this shaft out originally and, and uh, you know, to make it easier to mount the gear to it, but uh, there's some magic going on behind it that I don't want to, I really don't want to disturb. It's, you have to dig pretty deep. So I think I can do the repair on the front side and, uh, and do a good job. But uh, we may t we'll take a closer look at this, uh, these uh, little speed reducers and uh, so you can get in a... Actually, this is probably a good one to look at here. I'll zoom in on this one and we'll get a look at this and you'll get an a, a idea of how that works. And it's, uh, it's actually very clever. So let's check that out. All right, so hopefully you guys can, you guys can see this and, uh, and get a sense of this thing here. So you can just barely see them here. See that? That's a, that's a ball bearing. And there's three of them uh, inside this assembly here. So it has a center assembly and then it has the main actuator here. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch this part here in relation to me turning this. And you'll see that there's a fairly significant um, uh, speed reduction between this and this. Okay, so let's see if we can, we can demo that and you get, a, you get a sense of it. Okay, so you're watching the rate that I'm turning here, but watch this rate. Don't watch this, but watch that shaft. Okay, maybe it. Uh, maybe I should put a little, put a little, a little dot on there, and uh, it'll help you guys track it. Okay, so there's a, a little dot there. You see that? So the way that works is. They're using the ball bearings as, as kind of gear elements, right? So it has a little, a small shaft that goes through that contacts the ID of the bearings, okay? And then it's, the bearings are captured in a cage that's part of this, this element here. And then the outer race is the ID of this part here. So that keeps the whole mess together, right? But if you think about it, we're turning a small shaft against the ball, and then the ball is, is turning and rotating, so we actually get effectively a gear reduction. It's really clever, and it's super compact, and 
Um, I think you can get some pretty high reduction ratios there. So anyway, this thing's loaded with these things. It's got one, two, three, four that I've found in here. And um, I was like, what's going on there? And then I looked at it. I was like, oh, that's pretty clever. So, so anyway, that's kind of neat. And this whole assembly here is is a bunch of molded gears uh, to, uh, um, you know, this... I don't even know what this is, right? It's I guess this is the frequency ranges or whatever presets or something like that. So anyway, let's look at uh, let's look at our sick gear and uh, see what we need to do to make a new gear. All right, here's our gear, and uh, I made a little chicken sketch here so that we can make the blank and uh, get everything uh, correct. So I did a little measuring on this. So the, all the gears that are in that thing, uh, after checking them, they're all. Uh, they're metric, they're module gears, okay? So, uh, and the module system is interconnected with the, uh, the dimetrial pitch system, but uh, there's, uh, um, there's this, uh, differences in the way they're measured. So, but anyway, um, I've identified this as a 0.4 module uh, gear. It's 36 teeth. And uh, so what I did was uh, I measured OD and, uh, and uh, and then looked at the teeth and then uh, uh, determined uh, the proper wire size here to, uh, to measure the pitch diameter, okay, which is, I'm just kind of giving you a visual demo here. Miked over that, okay, and then you match up with uh, uh, the number of teeth in the, uh, in the, uh, the module, the pitch module, and uh, you come up with a pitch diameter and it agrees pretty closely, okay within a couple of tenths, which is in the, I would say the margins of error for a, a, a gear that's split in half and, uh, um, you know, et cetera, okay? So anyway, here's, uh, here's some information on that particular gear, right? So 0.4 module, 36 teeth, pitch diameter 14.4 millimeters, OD 15.2, which it's there, it's right on the, right on the money. And then I actually, uh, um, I found one online. I bought a molded one just for fun, and uh, actually, there's some of my. Um, so I was thinking it might be a 64 d uh, DP, but it turns out that it's a 0.4 module, and those are like really close. Um, so anyway, in this uh, uh, anyway, it's the same. Okay, so it meshes nicely and uh, seems to be good. All right. Uh, so now there's uh, more to this story actually, because. Uh, this is an involute uh, gear form, right? And uh, so at first I was like, well, maybe I'll just hand grind a tool. And I'm like, eh, I don't feel like doing that. And, um, um, you know, to get the tooth form correct. I mean, technically you can hand grind a little fly cutter bit and go to town, right? And I said, well, let me, hey, let me check on eBay, right? And see what's on eBay and uh, uh, what might be available, right? And guess what? The, the amazing world of the internet. So uh, I found a, uh, a 0.4 DP uh, involute gear cutter, uh, happened to be in China of all places and it was brand new. Anyway, so the funny part of the story is I went ahead and, and ordered the gear and it showed up obviously. Um, so the cutter plus shipping, uh, free shipping actually, 15 bucks to get this. <laughs> And uh, I'm like, oh, I don't even want to uh, pull a, a, a blank, tool steel blank out to, to grind uh, anything uh, uh, for that kind of money. Um, so anyway, I went ahead and ordered it and showed up on a little little envelope here, right? And it came from Zingzhu Yang in, uh, in, uh, off uh, such and such village on Ba Wang Road in Shandong, China, right? And this is the best part here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it says, uh, this is the customs uh, form here. It says, uh, line number one, quantity one, gadget. <laughs> and its value is two US dollars, right? And um, so anyway, uh, I just, I just kind of got a kick out of that. But, you know, the internet is just this wonderful thing, right? So this guy lives in this, uh, in this village on Ba Wang Road. And he got my order, and he put my name on the thing and put it in an envelope, and guess what? We got a gear cutter, so pretty cool. So uh, what do you say we go do some machining instead of yapping? And uh, let's make, we're going to make this out of brass. 
and uh, I got a chunk of brass rod and let's go over to the lathe and let's make the blank for this little monkey. All right, so we got some brass rod here. This is just uh, 360 brass, run of the mill, plain jean brass. Um, nothing too radical about it. Turns real nice. Let's see, I'm at the index here. I want it sticking out a little bit, so okay, let's just do that. You know, um, I got an email from somebody the other day and they're asking about DROs, right? And I'll, so I'll explain what I'm doing here. So I took a little skim cut there and I haven't, I haven't touched the, um, the cross slide, uh, the X axis here, right? So what I've done is I backed off of that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a good measurement of that turn section and I'm gonna calibrate the DRO is what I'm gonna do. And um, they were, they had a different idea of what I was doing, I think, and uh, so I'm just trying to explain it. So I'm getting the measurement here. There's my measurement. Okay, 0.6175. Okay, so I'm going to enter that. I'm going to enter that in the DRO now. So 0.6175. Enter. So now my DRO is kind of calibrated. The t or the tool is calibrated to that diameter, okay? And now I can just watch the DRO and look for my number that, uh, that I want this OD to be, which in our case is uh, 0.5984 to 0.5974. So we got about a one thou. Um, so basically I can, uh, I'm just gonna go there and we'll take a finish pass. So I'm going to turn it back a little ways because when you when you cut a gear like this, it's it's basically free to go a little bit further, and um, you know so we could make so if we screw one up later on, uh, uh, we got a we got some blanks to work with, and then I want a nicely turned diameter that's concentric with the gear so that I can indicate on that later on too. So I'll turn an inch or so. A little bit more. That's probably fine. I'm just gonna. So my DRO says 0.5996. Let's see where we are. See how close we are to that. All right. So we're we're pretty close to that. All right. Same thing with a boring bar. Come up. Touch off. All right. Touch off. Give it a little bit, and we'll go in a little ways. anything. That's the key. Don't touch anything. We're going to use our little stare at uh, uh, small hole gauge. Go in there and open it up. Get a nice nice feel. These are they're uh, they're kind of polished tool steel so you get a you get a pretty good feel on them. 
Okay, I'm gonna mic over that. Um, all right, so we're actually pretty close. <laughs> well, sometimes you get lucky. I probably should have drilled a little smaller, but uh, looks like we got a little bit left. Two, four, one, four. going to double check that shaft diameter and uh, then we'll bore that hole. This turns out to actually I decided to show some of this uh, measuring that diameter reasonably accurately it turns out to kind of be a pain in the neck uh, mainly because this is in the way and it overhangs this is next to it these little stub shafts are sticking out here so you you know just to get a, a quick thing you can get a sense of it here right but you it's not a very confidence inspiring uh, measurement. So, uh, you know, and if you got a normal, uh, a normal uh, micrometer here, um, you know, the bulk of the, of the frame and whatnot doesn't really lend itself. Uh, actually, does that work? No. So there's too much meat around this thing to, uh, to get a meaningful measurement, right? So what do you do, right? So yeah, what do you do? Well, that's why you buy tools all the time because then you might have something really cute like this little thing. <laughs> so this actually does kind of get in here and uh, it doesn't have a lot of extra real estate um, or overhead, I should say, um, so around, the, uh, around the top of it. Okay, so a little over 245 and a couple of tenths. Yep, 2451. And then, uh, so that's one way, that's a zero to half inch micrometer, and that's a cute little Lufkin. And um, um, I don't use this very often, but it, it's small up here, so every once in a while it comes in really handy when you got a, a tight little space to work with. And then the other way you can do this too is with a, uh, a disc micrometer too, because you, know, you don't have a bunch of fuzz in your hand. Uh, these project out from the uh, spindle a little bit, and uh, which allows you to uh, to uh, get up in there a little bit better too. And uh, now this, you got to be careful because the discs are pretty thin, so uh, you got to okay. And that that pretty much agrees with the other one within. Well, that one, this one doesn't read a tense, probably for good reason, but uh, it looks like 245 and a half, so we agree within a three, four tenths or three tenths. Okay, so anyway, that's a couple of ways you can uh, do something like that if you got a kind of a tight space, right? So the more of this work you do, the more tools that you collect that, uh, that kind of help you get uh, reliable measurements, I guess is the point. So buy tools. All right, so I think we're ready for... Finish uh, that. All right, I'm gonna back it up. Then I'll drag down the board. Oh boy, that's right where I want it. It's like two tenths under. So I think we're just gonna leave that. Um, we're just gonna leave that. So we're ready to go over to the mill now and uh, cut our, uh, our 0.4 module uh, teeth in that. All right, so we got our, uh, our old school Ellis uh, dividing head here. And basically what this is, it's a, it's a, uh, a dividing engine. So it's got a 40, 40 to 1 gear reduction through a worm gear to the output here, okay? And, uh, and then we have various uh, index plates that we can put on it, okay? And depending on the number of uh, uh, divisions that you want, you select different uh, numbers, uh, numbered circles here. So each, each one of these circles has a different number of holes in it. 
And um, so the f smallest one here is 21, and the uh, and this looks like it goes up to 33. Or oh, what is that outer one? Oh, that's interesting. Now let's see where the outer ones mark because it's not it's not 20. Well, maybe it is 28 because the spacing is farther apart. So it looks like 28. Yeah, okay, I get it. Um, in our case, uh, we're going to be using this 27 hole row here, okay? And uh, that's just right off. And I'll show you the. Uh, this is the little index card here. Probably won't be able to read that. Um, but uh, there's 36, 27, 27 uh, hole plate. And one turn of the crank, um, one turn of the crank plus three holes. Okay, and I'll show you what that means in a second. So just remember that for 36 teeth, 27 tooth, or 27 hole plate, one turn and three holes. Okay, uh, and that's kind of how you how you specify that. This is actually a fairly simple indexing job. Okay, um, but what we got to do first is we have to align our get our blank uh, kind of squared away, okay? And um, so let's take a look at that. So we're just gonna kind of roughly put this in there. And uh, come on, put it in there. And so, you know, we got some choices about how far in and out we go, right? Well, I don't wanna put it up to there, right? Because my the radius of my cutter is gonna interfere here. So I wanna stick it out a little bit. And uh, but I'll get the uh, I'll get the cutter here and we'll take a look at that in a sec. Okay, um, is it handy? So here's our here's our cutter, right? So we don't want to interfere with the uh, the chuck jaws here. So the end of the actually that's actually positioned pretty well. I could probably sneak in just a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and snug that up. Okay, and then what we want to do is we need to put this very accurately on the center of rotation of this okay now right now you know sure i could sit there and oop, sorry guys i could uh, sit there and crank this around right but there's an easier way in this case i can uh, disconnect the worm which is what i'm going to do here like that and you see how that folded out of the way there so now i can kind of freewheel that thing okay so let's indicate that so we're going to get this up there. So we'll do the rotation first. Okay. All right. Like that. Bump it over. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So it's out a little bit. So now this is a, uh, this chuck is adjustable here. So, um, um, let's see, make sure I know which way this is going. So that's high. All right, clockwise is high. All right. So. Oops. Make sure we want to do our lows. All right. Yeah, this is back. This is backwards from the normal four jaw, right? as close as I can get it here. It's better than half a thou, so, okay. All right, so that's aligned in one direction. Now we have to look at tilt, so we'll take a quick look at tilt. We're looking at where we are. Off. All right, there's our null. Okay, and then what I care about is what's it doing down here, right? Because I don't want to cut anything weird. Okay, so it looks like uh, that's got to go down. Okay. So this thing has the ability to tilt. Uh, there's some screws on the back side over here that we're going to loosen up and then uh, put some English on it and get that nice and straight. 
and uh, then we'll be pretty much ready to go. So these are bigger here. Crack those. I don't want to be super loose here. I want to be loose enough to move it, but not loose enough to to lose it, right? Does that make sense? All right. So let's see what a couple fell. Let's move it out of the tip here. Alright, so I got my little yeah, a little persuader here. I'm gonna kind of split the difference here and then see what we got here. Okay, that end didn't change much, so I'm going to bring this one closer. Oop. Let's see what we got here. Plus one and a quarter. Uh, but, okay, so I'm going to snug a little bit here. See if I can do this without moving anything. The cutting forces in this case are pretty low, so uh, I'm not super worried about things moving while I'm cutting it. All right, let's see. All right, we re-engaged the worm. And now what we want to do is we want to set our sectors, and you'll see why we, why, how we use these in a minute here. Um, these help block off and keep us from making a mistake as we're indexing around. So we're going to get in starting position here, which we're going to index in one direction only, right? Okay. So what we do is we put the, the zero up against, we're going to go clockwise, so we're going to go up against the left side of the pin, and then... So remember I said that we were going to do one rev and three holes, right? So what that means is, so one rev puts us back in that same hole, right? And then we want three holes. So what we want to do is only show three holes like that. Okay. Oop. All right. And then what we do is we're going to lock that down and use a... Studly or uh, screwdriver there. Okay, so what we do, and this is just a quick demo here. So one one index in this case here. So one turn. Okay, plus one, two, three holes, and we drop in there, right? Okay, and then what we do before we forget is we slide this up to here, and then our next index is one turn plus one, two, three holes. Then we go like that and we slide up, one turn, three holes, slide up, and so on and so on, rinse and repeat all the way around, okay? So that's kind of how that, uh, that whole deal works there uh, for dividing, uh, dividing heads. And this is a dividing head, this is not, it does do direct indexing, but uh, this is a proper dividing head, um, which is great for doing gears and things uh, that have weird numbers of, uh, of uh, spacings on them, like our 36 tooth gear here. Okay, so let's get started uh, doing a little milling. All right, so first step here is we got to uh, um, get our, uh, we're gonna cut on the side here. I'm just touching off here, so that's about, I'm gonna zero there, okay. Now this is a little bit of a tricky part here. Because I got to touch off on the side of that thing, but I don't want to touch off too hard. Let's put it in neutral here. Let's see if we get, if we get a little rub mark on there. Yeah, okay. So here's what I'm looking at. There's just a teeny little little rub mark there. 
you know, when you're touching off on the top of round things there, the contact point is actually very, very small. And uh, so, um, and the, at the tip of the gear tooth here, I can't really get a good measurement because it's a curve, right? So I have to go with half of the cutter thickness here, um, which is 155 divided by 2, that's 078. So let's take, let's take that out of the equation right now. So I'm dialing down the... Uh, um, the uh, Quill DRO 078, okay? So now what that does is that puts my my cutting edge right on the uh, right on the center, and it looks right here. Yeah, just eyeballing it. I'm just looking for, you know, super bozo mistakes. And then I want half of this, um, half of my existing diameter, which I forgot. Suboptimal positioning here. I forgot what this number is. I'm gonna get up on there. Okay. I'm so using my calculator to make uh, um, no bozo mistakes. All right, two. So now we got to get a good, a good diameter touch off here. So what I'm going to do is just run it up. This is just to get me in the neighborhood so I don't look like a... Oops. Oh, it's already touching. So what we're doing, we're just looking for a little graze in that uh, in that uh, die come. Okay, there it is. So I got just the tiniest little scratch there. Okay, and that's actually a pretty sensitive test. Let me uh, zero up before I bozo here. Okay. And then um, we're going to go to the, uh, the full depth. Uh, we're going to do this in one pass. So uh, let's uh, get set up to cut. All right, you guys ready to cut some teeth? Uh oh. I'm going to dial in the full depth, uh, which from uh, Machinery's Handbook is 34 thousandths. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lock the lock the saddle, and uh, you know, let's uh, give it a whirl and see what happens here. Make sure we're all good. Yep. Now she blows. Like I said, I'm gonna cut all the way down that blank. I'm gonna set a zero. All right, we come out. All right, one, three holes, and go again.
pixie dust here. So let's see what we got. This first. What I want is just to, to make sure that uh, I'm 180 degrees apart. So what I'm going to do is, uh, um, yeah, I got a good line. Um, I'm going to put the wires, the, the measuring wires in there. Okay. And very gingerly stick them in there. The O rings just to hold them, so I don't have to do a balancing act there. Okay. And, uh, and then we're going to measure over the wires and we're going to compare it to. Let's see where we're over here. Or 0 0.600278 over the over the wires for the original gear. Let's see what we got. So you do all this measuring before you uh, get all excited and pull this thing out to see if it fits, right? Uh, none of us have done that before, right? None of us have done that before. Oop. Uh, what's going on? Okay, six zero zero two. Uh, you know, I'm gonna call that PFG. Okay, okay, so from a pitch diameter standpoint, I think we're pretty good. These are the same two pins I used to measure the uh, stock gear. So, this is just for fun. Okay, all right, so let's uh, check out the next step. So back over on the lathe, and we are going to lop a piece off here. Okay, and it's one sixty. Uh, right, I'm just going to go right to size. This will make an interesting sound. It's a bronze brush. I'm just kind of deburring it a little bit. Okay, so I went and looked in my set screw inventory, and I had some some uh, 080 uh, set screws, and there's one on the end of this 028 Allen wrench here. So they're pretty small. So proportionally to the tooth, it's it's pretty small. So I'm just going to go straight in. This is going to make my life considerably easier than trying to come in at an angle and uh, and do all that. So we're going to counter. We'll we'll spot drill it. We'll counter drill it for a little over the body size of the uh, the set screw. Then we'll drill and tap it. Then we'll put it all together, and hopefully it's uh, it's good to go. All that stuff is so uh, so lightweight. If you hit it with the air hose, uh, adios, 
No chacho there. workable. Look at, look at the Allen wrench, is, uh, it's spinning on the thing. <laughs> Can't win. Alright, let's give this thing a try. Mm, looks like it's doing the business here. in full mesh so I'm just going to leave it there and leave a little space behind it to run the set screw down for tonight uh, we finished our little gear project and I hope you guys like that so if you would do me a favor hit that subscribe button or not um, also heads up for all those folks that uh, have been waiting for me uh, to fire up another Teespring t-shirt campaign I went ahead and did that I fired one up so there's a link in the description down below so just follow that link and you can go right to a support ox tools t-shirt and it goes to uh, helping out the shop and uh, buying machines and keeping things going around here and you get something back in your hand it's not just a handout to me so uh, if you feel like it great thank you very much and i'll catch you next time